We are back live at Impact. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us tonight here on Twitch. And if you're watching after the fact on YouTube, welcome on in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what kind of decks you want to see. If you do subscribe, because I can get them on more frequently, we have Adrian on Green Black Yawgmoth against Ben with Esper Satoro. If you've been watching live tonight, you know we've already seen Esper Satoro in the hands of Tim. So there is a Thought Seize on turn one. We got a Tide Binder, a Coat, two Stone Forge Mystics, and three lands. So that will take. Adrian down to 18 off of his Blooming Marsh. But yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out. I am Les Alex. You can find me on the internet. I'm on Twitter, and I make content on YouTube as well. And make sure, uh, if you're watching live, to follow us. We just became affiliates on Twitch, so you can give us some of them Bezos bucks. Ben plays Polluted Delta and passes back to Adrian. He's going to play a Verdant Catacombs and pass right back. Ben going to fetch and probably get a Surveil Land if I had to imagine. There's a Meticulous Archive, the brand new, well, not brand new, but relatively new, powerful uh, lands from Murders at Karlov Manor. Finding homes in not only modern, but pioneer, standard, and even older formats. And there's Stoneforge Mystic. Trigger going to go find an artifact. In response, Adrian going to crack a fetch land and get a forest. He'll drop to 17. And here comes Bowmaster. Gonna bring with him an Orc Army. At the end of the turn, I assume. Sorry about that glare. I don't know why. Some some matches we have a really horrendous glare on that bottom left side on the right player's screen. And then some matches we don't. Maybe it's the sleeves. I don't know. But it's the first time tonight we've had a glare at all. Here's a wall of roots for Adrian. And a young wolf for Adrian. Ben last week uh, played in the finals, was not able to uh, go undefeated, but had a great run, went 3-1 with his brand new Esper Satoru deck. Esper, uh, a pretty darn good engine once you get it going. Gonna play a polluted delta and a pass back. So he's got this Aegis. Yeah, he's taking a look. Forget the name of the card. Aegis something. It's basically an oblivion ring that is also happens to be an equipment. that will turn into the creature whenever Ben happens to equip. All right, looks like we're getting... Ben's explaining how exactly uh, Aegis works. Fetch down to 16. Finds himself a forest. If you've noticed, uh, Adrian, you know, we've had him on stream several times. I don't ever think I've actually mentioned it, but every single one of his cards are mismatched, if at all possible. So if it's a... Oh my gosh. He's having a heck of a turn here. Uh, if at all possible, though, he will have like a foil, a retro border... A full art, 
an extended boy, like <laughs> ultimate tilt factor. He goes back to round one with Jack having a white bordered storm deck. Just always got to tilt your opponent any means necessary. That's Adrian's way of doing it. All right. So we're sacking here to put some minus one, minus one counters on the Stoneforge Mystic. The Undying. And Ben says, I'll respond to that. I heard him. I don't know how. We have so many people here tonight. And I am in a room that is quite far away from them, but I heard him say that. So here comes Aegis. In response to that, we'll sack. Ben says, I have response to that. Solitude, pitching Stoneforge Mystic. What is your target, Ben? Probably Ogmoth, I would imagine, but let's see here. Just because hitting it with the Aegis isn't as good because it is an O-ring effect. So if that ever gets removed. Assimilation Aegis is the name of that card, by the way. Orc army sacrificed in response. A lot of things happen in this turn. <laughs> All right. Bowmaster going to get sacrificed. And now, <laughs> resolving all these triggers. So what's left is the Assimilation Aegis on Ben's side and two, two, two young wolves in the Wall of Roots on Adrian's side. Fetch land down to 17. I apologize for missing a life total change. We'll get an undercity sewers, which is another surveil land. Surveil lands are seeing a ton of play in these, these formats. You know, you can play one of each, basically, and be pretty safe to not uh, have slow draws. I'm sure there are clunky draws where you have two or three in, in your opener, but typically speaking, when you're fetching for them, it's really good. And there's a cryptic coat. So there's a 2-2. Two -two. As Ward 1, I believe. I think Ben's explaining he doesn't have... There is a token for it that you can put over the, uh, the card that gets... I don't even know what they call it. Chat, what do they, what do they call it? All right. Adrian going to have a think before he plays his land. And Yawgmoth back at it like a Craftmatic. This green-black Yawgmoth deck, very resilient, very good at grinding. Can come back from the brink of destruction, brink of losing. Draws a ton of cards. Delighted Halfling inbound. Sack it.
think Cryptic Code does have Ward though, right? Ward 2. The, the creature has Ward, not the code itself. Adrian losing some life from sacking things with Yagma. Down to eight. Been very familiar with his green-black Yawgmoth. Before the Esper Satoro deck, uh, before he was playing that, he was pretty devoted to this green-black Yawgmoth deck, so he knows it pretty much in and out. In fact, on this very channel, I'm sure you can go back and watch matches of Ben playing that deck. Adrian gonna pass. Fetch here for Ben. Let's see what he grabs. Hallowed Fountain. Tapped. Strictly worse than a Meticulous Archive in this instance. <laughs> but I do want to say thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. If you're watching live on Twitch or... If you're watching after the fact on YouTube, thanks for watching the content. We do appreciate it. We've been growing pretty steadily on YouTube and Twitch alike. So it's been awesome seeing everybody's support. We do appreciate it. We are committed to bringing you content every single week. And we just appreciate you. Not sure how Ben's going to get out of this one. Nah, he's going to call it, yeah. Adrian had a full grip and pretty darn good board presence there. So there it is. Yeah, Ben's going to lose game one here to Adrian. We're going to go to game two. I'm going to adjust our information here real quick. Oh, and I... Adrian is actually one and one. I guess that is quite relevant here. So Adrian is playing uh, Dream Crusher. But uh, yeah, we'll kick it back to the booth shortly. But yeah, I'm Les Alex. Thanks everybody for hanging out here at Impact. We are live from Impact Gaming Center in the fabulous Fairview Heights, Illinois at 49 Ludwig Drive. If you're in the area, come on out. Hang out with us. We've got a 20,000 foot, 20,000 square foot gaming facility. We've probably got about 40 or 50 people playing Magic tonight. We've got some Pokemon players in the house. We had some uh, Warhammer players earlier. I think they left, but a ton of people here tonight. Just gaming, enjoying each other's uh, company, and having a great night. We also have a birthday party going on. We have a, some, a 24 PC LAN center uh, set up with some really high end uh, gaming PCs. You can rent those spaces for only $5 an hour. So we're partying like it's 1999 with these prices. So come on up if you are in the area, or even if you're not, it's definitely a destination spot. You should. Uh, if you're if you're a gamer and you play card games, whether you play Pokemon, Lorcana, Star Wars Unlimited, or Magic the Gathering, definitely, definitely a uh, place that you want to check out. We've got a ton of Magic the Gathering singles. We also carry singles for One Piece, Star Wars Unlimited, Pokemon, and Lorcana. So if you're in the area or just want to make a day trip, and you're in the Midwest, come on out. We'd love to see you. We'd love to talk to you. And uh, yeah, these players conversing, 
talking about sideboard plans. They're pretty familiar with each other. I think they've probably played each other quite a bit. <laughs> uh, both are regulars at this point, so. But yeah, let's kick it back down and see how these guys, see if they'll show us anything uh, sideboarding-wise. But, yeah. Rocking and rolling. We got one more round. We had 20 players. I said earlier in the broadcast, if you watch round one, we had 17. We had a couple more show up uh, real late. Uh, so we have 20 total players for modern FM. And then probably an additional like 25 or 30 playing commander. It's crazy. Friday nights is absolutely a blast here at Impact. There's just an energy in the building, you can feel it. On Friday nights, it's a ton of fun. Looks like we do have some more hammer players still, so that's awesome as well. But yeah, if you're looking to play Magic, we do offer Magic on Monday. That's Pioneer. Fridays, of course, is Commander and Modern F and M. And we also have CEDH on Thursdays. So feel free to come up on any of those days. I assume Ben here is going to be on the play. Are we keeping? Marsh Flats. Down to 17, so we're fetching and shocking. And there's Ether Vial. From, uh, not from the vault. Secret layer ether vial. Really beautiful looking ether vial. And same thing from Adrian here. Delighted halfling. That's. Pretty darn good. It's kind of what you want there. Second vial for Ben. Got the dueling vials. <laughs> I don't know what card that was, but I'm pretty sure it's the one that destroys... Two artifacts or enchantments. Forget the name of it, though. Pretty darn good turn for Adrian, honestly. Draw the shrine inbound for Ben. Down to 14 from the shock fetch. Or shock fetch shock. Wall of Omens, secret layer version, and draw a card, and pass back. Haven't really been able to see in this match uh, really the power of Ben's deck. There's Gris the Hunger Tide. That's pretty good for Adrian. But he does use cards like Ephemerate, Solitude, Subtlety, Grief, these kinds of cards, and then he Ephemerates them. That's why uh, Wall of Omens, definitely a pretty good card. And then, of course, Satoru can draw a card every single time a creature enters the battlefield when it w didn't have any mana used to cast it. It's obviously works off of the Incarnation Elementals. And, of course, any creature that enters the battlefield off of Ether Vial. It's interesting also how different the builds of Ben's Esper Satoru deck and Tim, who we saw in round one, how different their decks are. Pass back. Burning Catacombs. We're just going to activate, mill a card, create a pest. Adrian with all the professors <laughs> and the. Trainer Pokemon cards. Of 
I'm not familiar with that card. Oh, Dawnbrand Cleric. Dawnbringer Cleric is a two mana one three. And when it enters the battlefield, you can either gain two life, life <laughs> destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. So here's a thought seize from Adrian. We got Solitude, Subtlety, Ephemerate, Tashani, Tidebinder, Dryad Arbor Go. All of them is playing some pretty good defense here, that's for sure. Cleric as well. Thinking where Adrian really doesn't have a good attack. There's another wall of omens. Going to draw in a card. No lands. Uh, convoke. And we're going to find a Young Moth. Sacking some tokens to get rid of this Dawnbringer Cleric. Gonna need to do one more to get rid of it completely. It's, it's night and day. How this deck operate? How uh, Green Black Yogmoth operates when Yogmoth is on the battlefield versus when it's not. And so Solitude going to take care of Adrian's uh, sorry. Going to take care of Adrian's Yogmoth. I think we have the life totals flip flop there, too. Thankfully, Adrian's life pad is actually uh, pretty legible, so <laughs> helping me out. I'm going to go ahead and Thought Seize. Let's see that last card. Uh, Solitude Pitching Skyclave Apparition. I think that was a Glissa. Huh. 
All right, maybe I was mistaken. Young wolf, go. Draw step and a pass. Been really struggling here to hit some land drops. Underground mortuary. I'm gonna put that in the bin. Hit the grist. Do it again so he makes I believe two insects because he hit an insect. Grist is an insect. He can actually start attacking here. Block those two, take one. Down to 13 goes Ben. Marsh Flats. There we go. Hey, that's what you need if you're Ben. Ben's in a weird spot now, though, too, because he's at the point where he does need lands, but now he, we're getting to the late stages of the game, and he needs to draw some action, so... Adrian has three... Insect tokens currently. Gonna attack. Gonna block those. Take three. Down to ten. Adrian peeking at his graveyard. Orcish Bowmasters milled. Gonna make an insect. That grist is at like a million. Back at the soul cauldron. Okay. We're cooking with the cauldron. No pun intended. Gonna activate soul cauldron here. What are we getting? Another Grist. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll put a counter on the Dryad Arbor. This is where things get a little silly, because all of Adrian's creatures with counters on them are going to gain the abilities of Grist, which is just silly. The fact that it's a creature everywhere else other than the battlefield is very interesting. Under City Sewer is going to come on in. Ben going to go down to nine from the fetch. I'll take a surveil. Trigger, trigger. What do we want to do with that top card, Ben? Not showing us anything. Other than the thought seizes, Ben's not showing us anything. Adrian's been uh, very gracious with showing the camera his cards. He will mill that. That is a Stoneforge Mystic from the Secret Lair that just released. Ben draws. Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Mystic. Trigger. Let's see. Okay, he's got something going now. Assimilation. Assimilation Aegis. The equipment that Ben has elected to go grab. Let you cook. What's up, Cap Kelso? How you doing tonight, man? Let him cook. Oh, yeah. I was like, what? I mean, you can cook, man. Are you at home? You can cook. And again, Adrian sacrificing the... Not sacrificing, but just getting rid of... Cleaning up his board state a little. Gonna make another token here. This one has summoning sickness. Chris is at uh, infinity billion loyalty. Gonna get in there with all these little critters. Wall of Omens. Probably gonna jump in front of a couple of these.
I mean, he could even block with the Stone Forge. Not really risky. Block there, block there, block there. <laughs> yep, so one of Adrian's tokens will hit the bin. Adrian does have a fatal push in hand, so probably be pretty decent to get rid of uh, this Stoneforge Mystic this turn. He's going to exile this uh, Yawgmoth. Does Ben have a response here? Chris, yeah, Grispus Cauldron is crazy goofy. I agree. Where are you at tonight, Kelso? I need my round one Azorius control on camera, man. One of these, one of these Fridays, I'm gonna play, and then I, I want to play that deck because I haven't played the current iteration of Az Azorius Control in Modern in a very long time. You can do commentary. How about that? Work again? Yeah. So we are pitching the Assimilation Aegis for Solitude, which will gain Adrian a point of life. Ben, though, down to five. I mean, I imagine this just can't be a good matchup. Adrian just goes so wide. It's hard for Ben, even on a good draw. Now, obviously, Ben got stuck on two lands for 30,000 turns, and that's not good, but... Just rough. We are sacking. So if you don't know, because Yogmoth is currently exiled with Agatha's Soul Cauldron, Adrian can sacrifice it and use its abilities as if it were on the battlefield with all the creatures that have counters on them. And that's what he's doing currently. Just mowing the lawn here. Drawing cards all the while. Deck nuts. Old school Jun players are like losing their mind over this deck. Like, wait, it draws how many cards a turn? Yeah, and there you go. Adrian, uh, been gonna extend the hand. Adrian gonna uh play Dream Crusher here. He was he was uh the pair up. Uh Adrian gonna play Dream Crusher on Green Black Yogmoth, beating Ben on Esper Satoru. And, uh, yeah, this, this Green Black Yawgmoth deck is no joke. But uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. I'm Alex, uh, and we are live at Impact. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're watching live on Twitch, uh, make sure to uh, hit that follow button. We'll be back with round four, the final round, very, very shortly. I appreciate y'all, and I'll catch y'all on the flippy flop. Adios.